Chelsea. Boo hoo. We talk about this literally all the time. Disney that has a vomit bag. No, thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm just keeping it real. Abort mission, abort. Hey y'all, it's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey everyone, welcome back to another very special episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I'm with Carla and Becky today. Morning, Carla and Becky. Hi. (laughs) And, you know, the three of us are, we, we do this podcast together a lot. We have so much fun. And today we're closing out these big mega sevens episodes we've had. You all have had helpful lists of advice through all seven dwarves. We've talked resorts and tips and tricks and things you need to know. Everything has been so helpful. And today we are doing our first ever mailbag episode. Listeners, we want to just thank you so much. You provided us with so much great content for today's episode. So many people submitted their dopey moments and are going to let us learn from them here on the podcast today. We're going to share your stories, talk about why these were mistakes and ways you can prevent them. And of course, hopefully people that are listening today that have yet to make these mistakes that are so common, don't make the same mistake going forward. (laughs) Have uh, Carla and Becky, have have y'all made dopey mistakes when planning or going to Disney with your family? I try to come across as like, I have my stuff together. However, I have an entire notebook full of stories that are just like, how did we do that? We were all first time visitors to Disney at one point, right? That That's when the dopey mistakes happen. Yeah, but also they happen like years later because I still make the dumbest mistakes. And it kind of comes from like, I've become complacent when I go to Disney because I think that I'm such an expert and I do it all the time. I'm still making mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't plan enough because we're so used to planning every little detail. I actually just thought of a funny dopey mistake that I made for my family. And these are the stories that to me, when we look back at our trip, these are what we laugh about the most, you know? And so these stories today are funny. And of course we want to do everything we can to avoid making these mistakes, to have the best experience you can have, but also, you know, letting a dopey mistake ruin your day or your trip is absolutely a choice. You know, these are the things that your family will laugh about together later. And, you know, we all, like Becky said, we we were all new at once. And even if you're not new, you could still make a mistake. <laughs> I think um, in general, like we're all getting ready to go to Disney, right? You get comfortable when you're going to Disney on the regular. And so like, I haven't even packed and I'm leaving tomorrow. Like I haven't either. <laughs> You're going to forget stuff. You're going to just, it's just comes with the territory. And there's so much to know about Disney that it's easy to make these mistakes if you're not thinking through all of those things, which we can help you do as an agent, right? For sure. Only that, but things are constantly changing. Um, Like this week is the Journey of Water preview. I'm a pass holder. I didn't even know it was starting this week. I probably should have. That might be because I'm not overly excited about the experience. But, you know, like Katie is a pass holder as well. She went on opening day. That to me was a dopey mistake. I don't know. I wouldn't have gone on opening day. I saw the figment line. The journey of water sprinkler was just as like crazy. I just like, I don't know. I agree that that could be classified as one of these mistakes. For those listeners that don't know, journey of water is the new Moana I won't even call it an attraction and new Moana experience that's just now opening up in Epcot and not to thwart anyone's excitement, but it looks like a ride queue. It looks like the, but that's how LJ described it yesterday. Did you watch her video? I haven't seen it yet, but I, that's exactly what I thought when I saw people previewing it, when Katie, our fellow podcast host shared her experience with us. I was like, this kind of looks like the queue to get into the Moana attraction, similar to like what the flight of passage queue looks like. You know, Disney has set up that these ride queues are immersive. You know, even Peter Pan has Tinkerbell flying around and interacting with you. So, you know, I, I don't, I, are we on the grumpy episode today again? <laughs> But I was that was just reminding me, like, as much as we go to Disney, like even Disney makes dopey mistakes. We did a whole episode on it, right? All the like missed opportunities that Disney's had. Exactly. Yeah. Disney makes dopey mistakes. We make them. Um, I'm excited to kind of dive in here and uh, 
What do you think the most common type of dopey mistake is? It has to be transportation, right? I don't know. It's complicated. Yeah. A transportation is definitely, I mean, I've made the dopey mistakes of transportation. That's definitely probably the most common one we've seen. So we'll just start with like a really easy one. This one, just a, I don't even know if it's classified as a true dopey mistake, but I certainly would consider it one. One of our listeners, Chelsea said she stayed at the Grand Floridian and she did not enjoy she did not Boo-hoo, include, Chelsea. Boo-hoo. She did not include a down day to enjoy her resort, packed her days full, had no clue what she was doing, and was barely ever there. While this one isn't like we're gonna laugh at Chelsea, this is a huge dopey mistake. This is like you paid the money to enjoy the bubble and didn't experience everything that Disney and your resort could have offered you. Especially deluxe and at that location. I mean, that's a big, that's a big boo boo. Seriously. I have, um, I've made a mistake like this one, just over planning in general is one of those dopey mistakes. Like give yourself time to enjoy what you're paying to enjoy. Like don't plan yourself so, so tight. But my very, very first trip to Disney world, uh, was actually a universal Disney combo. We started at universal and we stayed at Lowe's Portofino Bay. Like, talk about a great way to start out a vacation. Allie, guess where we moved to for our Disney? <laughs> our oh, Disney- no. You were at All-Star Sports. I was at All-Star Sports. We went from Lowe's Portofino Bay to All-Star Sports as our Disney portion. <laughs> oh, lesson, do do lesson here is if you're going to do a split stay, I don't care if it's all split stay Disney or if it's split stay Universal and Disney, you always start at the lesser and move up. You never move back. Oh my gosh. My So how we were staying at Lowe's Portofino Bay, like Sean and I got married very, very young. We were at Disney. This was pre-kids. We were like 20 years old doing Disney as like adults. Were we really adults? I don't know. We couldn't have drank. <laughs> but <clears throat> his company sent us to, to Florida. It was Sean's very first time getting on an airplane ever in his entire life. Flew four hours nonstop to... Orlando. We walked out of the airport and talk about getting hit by a ton of bricks from people who never had left like Utah dry desert air. My glasses like fogged as soon as we walked out of the airport. We were not prepared for the humidity. We had no idea what we were doing. We got to stay in this amazing like suite at Lowe's Portofino Bay. We got to have a I was like freaking out as a 20 year old like oh my gosh there's a TV in the bathroom like (laughs) like feeling bougie. And then the part that we had to pay for ourselves was Disney World. And as 20 year olds, we were like, we're going to really like break the bank and splurge and stay on Disney property at All Star Sports. (laughs) At least you did something right. Yeah. At least you stayed on site. (laughs) Yeah. That's hilarious. I didn't know that story. (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, that reminded me though, uh, fog spray for your glasses. Do you have you, Carla, have you ever used that? Cause I know you wear glasses too. No, but like if you snorkel, oh. they make fog stuff or you just spit in them. I don't think I, I don't think you're <laughs> spitting on your glasses, but I wear, um, I use fog spray on my glasses. That's like a good pro tip for anybody that wears glasses and you're going to Orlando. It actually does work. It prevents your glasses from fogging up when you go outside and it mine actually, if I spray a couple of times on each side, lasts for days. So that's a pro tip. The worst was when we had to wear masks with glasses because it's like all the air would just. Yeah, that's how I learned about fog spray. And it works in Florida as well. It works for humidity. I wore glasses my entire life until I had my contacts implanted into my eyeballs about eight years ago. But <laughs> our first time getting to Florida, there is nothing like that humidity. If you've never been to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That would be a a lot of dopey mistakes. Okay. This one I thought was funny. <laughs> Ashley, one of our listeners, Ashley said, we were so excited to go on our very first Disney trip. We had read all about rope dropping. So we got there super early and just ran in and started walking toward the very first ride that we saw, which happened to be the magic carpets of Aladdin. <laughs> Basically, no. in the direction no one else was, and rope dropped the magic carpets. Not <laughs> ideal for which us. isn't even open for rope drop anymore, right? I don't know. I just thought that was so funny because you can just picture this person running. Everybody's going to mind him. <laughs> she veers left, and she's yeah. like, "There's a ride." <laughs> like <laughs> rope drops the magic carpets. Basically, Dumbo, but not as cute as Dumbo. <laughs> 
I think that there's probably a lot of mistakes made when it comes to rope dropping. So when I was kind of new to going to Disney as an adult without my mother telling me what to do, we decided that we were going to rope drop and we stayed off site. So we pulled into the parking lot, lot like an hour and a half, two hours early, thinking that we could go through the TCC, go through security, and then we could take the monorail and be at the front gates when it opens on Main Street 30 minutes before whatever. No, the monorail doesn't start running until an hour before the park opens. It's dark outside. That's how (laughs) it was like 530 a.m. We're standing there. My husband's looking at me like you freaking idiot. (laughs) Like I thought you knew what you were doing here. And I'm like, listen, I'm trying. (laughs) Imagine being there in the dark at 530 in the morning, finally getting in and going to the magic carpet. (laughs) I actually don't think it's that bad of an idea to not follow the crowd during rope drop, like go and experience a different park. But the the magic carpets, like you need a little bit more prep, know where you're headed. The only worst you could do is if you rope dropped Carousel of Progress. (laughs) True. This podcast is going to I wonder if she got spit on by the camel for that bad move. <laughs> I was thinking that same thing, like running past it and all of a sudden you're starting your day wet. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Hilarious. I, I, that one's so funny. Um, this one's, this next one I thought was good because how many clients do we talk to? How many families do we work with that they just cannot wrap their heads around what Disney World even is or looks like. I was just talking to a family yesterday who's heading down for a land and sea vacation. And they're they're heading to uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party before their cruise. And they were like, do we just pay for uh, the bus once we arrive to get to Mickey's party? And I'm like, no, 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 no. And, and people just have no idea how the transportation system works. And one of our listeners and actually fellow agent, uh, Katie, said, not our Katie from the podcast, different Katie, said that her family went to dinner at the Wilderness Lodge. And then after they were heading to Animal Kingdom. So that's like a pretty strategic different thing to plan. She said, we left our stroller at Wilderness Lodge. So my husband decided he would go back and get it for us, but instead ended up at Fort Wilderness. And oh, Lord. (laughs) And I just thought that one was funny because I bet a lot of people have made that mistake. Like, do you think a lot of people have been staying at Fort Wilderness and caught the bus to Wilderness Lodge ended up at totally wrong resort. The funny thing is, is that when I'm talking to people, I'll pitch Wilderness Lodge and they're like, oh no, I'm not staying there. And I'm thinking like, it's not what, it's not Fort Wilderness. I promise you, like this is Lux, Cabin, Mountains. Carla, you're saying you pitch, not, you pitch Wilderness Lodge to people? This is not podunk cabins in the woods with you know, no transportation, you know, but this reminds me of something else too, is that um, I think it was in the big group yesterday. Somebody was saying that their park day was at animal kingdom and they had lunch reservations. Okay. So lunch at 1225 at um, the contemporary and they're like, well, when should we leave? And everybody on the comments, like agents or not, were like, you can't do that. Like there, you don't like, you would never leave a park and then go all the way to the other side. It'd be different if you were at magic kingdom Mm -hmm. and had lunch at contemporary, that makes sense. But kind of knowing logistically where things are and then the amount of time that that would take for you to have your character meal when there's a fantastic character meal, right. in animal kingdom, it was like, everybody's like abort mission, abort. (laughs) Go somewhere else. Don't do it. Change your park days. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, there's so many people like that out there. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And I I know back to just understanding the logistics of the layout of there are four parks and they are not close. And there are how many resorts like easily in the 20s, at least. And they are not close. They are not close to each other. No. And I would imagine like looking at the resort map as a whole, being a newbie, like looking at it on the computer screen, you have no idea how far apart those things are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It looks, it's like me. (laughs) I made a doping mistake, not Disney. Well, it was Disney related because we were going to Alani. And I think I've talked about it on the podcast before where my wife and I had a flight from LAX to Hawaii to get to Alani. And we did not realize this is this is our dopiest moment of all time. We didn't know that our flight was going to be like four and a half or five hours long. We had our oldest daughter who was one at the time and we thought the flight was 45 minutes. And so we were super unfair. I don't know, like we never looked at or we did. I have no idea how we made this mistake, but 
all I was thinking, what made me think of it now is it looks so close on the map. <laughs> like I just thought it was going to be like a quick little puddle jump flight as Chris would call it. So I, I get it. Like when you're looking at the map, it's hard to actually understand. And this other, this other dopey submission that our listener Lauren submitted kind of goes right along with this. And I've made a very similar mistake. Um, She said she took, they were staying at all star movies and she took the bus to Epcot on the day that she was going to Hollywood studios because she really wanted to ride the Skyliner into Hollywood studios. Oh, so that's a big bummer. And at that point, I guess you have to Uber or get all the way back to a different resort because the Skyliner is actually at the international entrance of Epcot and the bus is going to drop you off at the front and you're not getting to the Skyliner without a park ticket to Epcot. So she was stuck. She was not Lauren. Listener, Lauren, you are not getting to the Skyliner. No, but next time, Lauren, you're going to go straight to Hollywood and then do your park there. And then after ride the Skyliner over to Epcot. Or if you don't have a park hopper, you're just going to ride the Skyliner over to the Riviera to enjoy some good drinks and snacks. Yeah, that or go back to the go back to um, the International Gateway and check out our favorite area, the boardwalk. It's It's amazing. So many better ways to strategize, but you're definitely not. Please, if you are listening, do not take a bus to Epcot in hopes to ride the Skyliner to another park. I I have this exact situation in my very biggest blunder of all transportation. This is on the same Disney or first trip to Disney World. And the game that my family plays about what's the worst way to get to any specific place, right? We actually did this. Sean and I were staying at our, the most amazing resort ever, All Star Sports, which is, (laughs) I actually stayed recently and they've renovated it recently. I really do enjoy it now. But we were trying to figure out how do we get to the boardwalk? It was the opening day for college football. And we had to go watch our team at, do you guys remember when Club ESPN was on the boardwalk? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We didn't know where else to go watch our, our team on opening day. And so we're like, we have to get from All Star Sports over to the Club ESPN. How would you get there? It seems like it wouldn't be that hard, right? Go to a park and then go to the boardwalk. No, the boardwalk was very much a DVC resort at that time. And busing was not as regular as a normal resort. So we're like, it's right on the map. You can see it. It's right next to Epcot. Let's just take a bus to Epcot. And then we'll be able to walk over to Club ESPN. Just like you were just saying, Allie, you cannot go through Epcot. Can't do (laughs) it. Ticket. We didn't have a park hopper. We had a one day ticket for or each one per park. We didn't have reservations. So we got to the front of Epcot and we're like, oh, there's no way to get over there because there isn't a bus from Epcot to the boardwalk, right? If you're at Epcot, you're just going to walk out the international gate. So then we decided, okay, let's take the monorail to the TTC. We'll certainly be able to get from oh, no. <laughs> to the boardwalk. Can you get from the TTC to the boardwalk? Nope. <laughs> No. So you were just literally using every form of transportation the wrong way all day. We're sitting at the TTC. Now what do we do? Okay, we ended up going to downtown Disney because we're like, oh, maybe we can get there from downtown Disney. We get to downtown Disney, wait 35 minutes for a bus to take a bus from downtown Disney to finally get to the boardwalk two hours late for our reservation. I was going to say, is the game even still so on? <laughs> it was about half time by the time we got there. <laughs> Oh my God. And really, you probably could have found somewhere at downtown Disney to watch it. Yeah, there was probably a great experience there just to get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's some terrible. of my worst ones also experience this or also include just taking Disney transportation. It's so convenient when you know how to navigate it. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to end up, I guess, all over Disney World like you. So this next one I thought was funny. So nobody really talked about, nobody submitted anything about parks closing because of, um, parties like the mickey's not so scary Mm. halloween and very merry and making sure you're checking your park hours and that i just know is a dopey mistake that people make if you're not working with a travel agent and you're not regularly checking your park hours you could end up this big magical day at magic kingdom being the only day you're there and you have to leave early because of a party if you don't know when they're happening but (laughs) this one i thought was really funny rachel said well on a disney trip with my in-laws which was a large group of 11 of us we were having a great fun filled day at Hollywood studios. We had rope dropped that morning and made it to all the rides that we had our hearts set on. We had eaten all the food we wanted and we even made lightsabers. It was a, it was pretty warm that day. And it was the third day out of a seven day trip. 
My father-in-law asked if we could just call it a day and finish the day up at a water park, which we also had tickets to. We all thought that that sounded wonderful. And we set off on the Skyliner back to Art of Animation where we were staying. We changed, slathered on our sunscreen and climbed onto a bus to Disney Springs slash Typhoon Lagoon. As the bus drove past the entrance to Typhoon Lagoon, we were so confused. Why didn't they drop us off? We thought maybe they needed to pick up some other passengers at Disney Springs and then they would just circle back and drop us off at the water park. We found out that wasn't the case and we had to walk all the way to the end of the bus stop to get another bus to Typhoon Lagoon. Once we were on the bus, clearly in our swimsuits with our sunscreen on, the bus was taking us to the water park. A large group of towel clad guests waiting climb on to the now empty bus that we left. We're so happy and excited to float around the lazy river and zoom down all those water slides. We got to the gate. My brother-in-law, who was the lead, scans into the park and the gate attendant looks at him and says, Sir, the park closes in three minutes. Oh, no. (laughs) So she said, we all laugh about it now. We shake our heads. Make sure you check your park times. So they left Hollywood Studios after a really long day, took your Disney transportation all over. You know, it's like a real hassle to get 11 people changed into bathing suits. And like, honestly, we're Becky, you mentioned we're heading to Disney this week. We had the big Smart Moms conference. Actually, by the time this episode airs, The conference will be ending, but we, as we're recording, are about to head there. And one of the things I love about going as an adult is not having to spray, like, sunscreen my kids up. I was going to say sunscreen. Sunscreening my kids is just, like, such a chore. So I can't imagine leaving a park, 11 of us, putting on suits and sunscreen. (laughs) Listen, and it doesn't get easier the older they get. No, thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm just keeping it real. (laughs) Can you imagine, sir, the park closes in three minutes? Like, what do you even do at that point? (laughs) You go back to your hotel and swim at your hotel, I think is yeah. what you I do. mean, I guess it makes the pool day for the rest of the day pretty easy. Oh, um, I thought this one was silly as well. One of our listeners, Tiffany, just submitted this one uh, the other day. And she said that the mistake she submitted, she made that day. She said, I just made this mistake today. I made reservations for November for my son for his third birthday. We were already within our 60 day window for our dining reservations. So I quickly made two dinner reservations and went about my day. Tonight, we were eating dinner in South Carolina where we live. And I received a notification from Disney letting me know it was time to check in for Rodeo Roundup. Oh, no. <laughs> but I messed up the dates oh. and I looked for this evening. Oh, So that's pretty funny. Like, I can't imagine sitting at my table and needing to check in. But also, she probably got charged because if it's time to check in. Yeah, she probably had a cancellation. But can you also be like, I'm so excited. I scored Rodeo Roundup. Is she going to be able to get Rodeo Roundup? I know. It was probably one of those weird, like, same day drops, and she was just lucky it was there, and then it's, like, not actually going to be there for November. (sighs) This one, I'm not sure what we're going to classify this mistake as. She said, my dopiest moment was choosing to wear a floor-length strapless silk gown to dine at the California Grill with my two kids who were five and eight years old at the time. I dressed up so beautifully to have a special mommy-daughter evening out. As we walked in, the restaurant was packed. The hostess informed us that we had the most perfect window seat, and I was thanking my lucky stars that everything was working exactly as I planned it. As we were dead center of the restaurant heading toward our table in the dining room, my five-year-old stepped on my dress as I continued to walk, and bam, there I was. Oh, no. She says, out in the middle of California Grill. I might have gotten away with no one noticing except my you guys except my daughter who saw that what was happening started screaming oh no mommy you must be so embarrassed <laughs> while not moving off my dress every eyeball turned to me that was michelle our listener michelle so michelle you win you win <laughs> and i think the lesson is don't wear a floor length gown at disney world <laughs> No, it's not. The lesson is don't go to California Grill with your children. <laughs> Leave them at home. Oh, my God. Wear your gowns, ladies. Wear your gowns. I think that there's so many dopey moves when it comes to what you wear to the parks and wear. I mean, by all means, do you. But just be smart about it. Wear smart shoes. We talk about this stuff all the time. Stacy's huge on that. If you have uh, thunder thighs like I do, wear some some sort of chafing. Don't wear a skirt without biker shorts. <laughs> like, use your brains. We're all adults. We've made it this far. Like, let's try to make it another day without a blister or a rash. You know, whatever, whatever we need to do, right? You know dang well there are... If we had prompted with send us your wardrobe malfunction stories, you know, we oh, would have yeah. gotten more of these. Yeah, that's our next mailbag episode. 
<laughs> I just thought that one was so funny. I'm so glad that Michelle decided to share it because that's one of those things where it could have been so embarrassing and you could just let it cripple you or you can just be like, well, that happened. <laughs> Let's go sit down and eat. <laughs> Everybody else in the restaurant got a view. Let's go sit down for our view. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. This one is silly and I can't imagine it happens to a whole lot of people, but I feel like we need to talk about it just in case. This one was submitted by Katie, also a, not our Katie on the podcast, but also another, we have a lot of travel agents named Katie within Smart Moms. She says that we thought we would be really smart by leaving and starting our our drive to Disney around 4 a.m. We woke the kids up from their sleep and just carried them to the car thinking they would just fall back asleep. They didn't sleep a wink in the nine hour drive. And it wasn't until we were pulling up to Disney that I realized we didn't bring any shoes for them. Oh, sh- <laughs> shoot. No. So got him out of bed, took him straight to the car. No shoes. I've done that before, not to Disney, but yeah, I- it's always my son forgets underwear, forgets shoes. <laughs> so they had to go to Walmart and buy new shoes and it all worked out. But I mean, are you guys packing extra shoes in your luggage when you're traveling? Like would, would if you carried your kids to the car? Would it be a problem that you didn't have shoes? Yeah. Well, it's speaking of it, not getting easier when they get older, like as they're getting older, they start doing their own packing. And just last month on our Disney trip last month, we got probably about an hour up the road of our three hour drive to Disney. And McKenna, my 15 year old said, "Um, mom, I don't have any shoes. (laughs) And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have any shoes? She's like, I came to the car and I put my shoes on the table. So we were on our way to Disney. We had to stop and buy shoes for my 15 year old. It does not always get easier with age. You know what? I feel like that's a good actual doc strategy for me to use in my life. I'm just going to accidentally get in my car without shoes and show up somewhere and tell my husband like, (laughs) I forgot my shoes. Oh, I forgot my handbag. Oh, you have to buy a new one. Yeah. My sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. These are great. These are great stories. We are going to take a break. Uh, We come back. We are going to continue learning from our listeners. Hey, Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast listeners. Have you joined our online communities yet? You can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast, where we're connecting daily with listeners, answering questions, and sharing our favorite Disney memories. Joining one of our communities, especially on Facebook, is like pulling up your own chair and joining the conversation yourself. Why let Tuesday be the only day you hear from us? Come join us to continue episode conversations or maybe even tell us if you disagree with something we've said. We're planning trips, offering tips, and ready for you to pull up your chair. So follow the links in our show notes and join us at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. All right. Welcome back, everyone. We are reading through our listeners' mistakes, learning from listeners today so that we don't make dopey mistakes in the future, so that our listeners don't make dopey mistakes in the future, and so that we also know that dopey mistakes uh, don't have to ruin your day. They can be funny stories in uh, in hindsight. A lot of these have had to do with transportation, not checking bus times, not knowing how to get from point A to point B, but some of them are just funny stories. Uh, this next one, our listener Emma submitted. She said, my family first went to Walt Disney World in 2012, and naturally we wanted to do all of the Disney things that included going to the Hall of Presidents, which is that her first dopey mistake? <laughs> yeah, the, the first dopey mistake. Did she rope drop it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but she wouldn't have had a fight from our, our friend that went to the magic carpets. <laughs> says, before the show began, we wandered around the holding room and admired all the replicas and outfits and read some of the history of our founding fathers. My grandmother, who was with us, also wandered around the room and she became perplexed with a wax figure by one of the doors. She thought the figure was perfectly dressed in period clothing and just amazingly lifelike, just like she would expect at Disney World. As she began to peer closer to the face, the figure came to life and asked, can I help you, (laughs) ma'am? Suffice (laughs) to say, my grandmother was completely shocked. She jumped back in a fit of giggles, realizing that her dopey mistake was thinking that a cast member was a wax figure. Oh my God. My family's favorite memory of the day. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a dopey mistake, like when it comes to planning and strategy, but I thought it was hilarious. That's a great story. Yeah. I, first of all, the cast members are amazing and all cast members are really dressed to the part. Um, and it would make total sense that a period dressed person like wax figure would be in that hall there, you know, that holding room. Um, I wonder if that's something that the, the, the cast members in there do naturally, like just hold still long enough that somebody. Yeah. Figure. I was going to say like, how close do you think she got before like 
they said anything. Yeah, the cast member's like, I want to be respectful. I don't want to like creep her out, but like, how close do I let her get to my face? <laughs> I've actually never been in the Hall of Presidents. Have you guys? I have. I, I like to like to but... what escape the rain. <laughs> no, like my husband's a history teacher. Like he teaches history in middle school in Florida, so of course we have to go in there and see it. But that's really funny. I have a sim- It's not like super similar, but it's just a silly. A family member made this mistake. We were at. It was back when I was a little girl. This was probably in the mid nineties, and we used to go to River Country. Did you all ever go to River Country? I've never heard. I don't think so. so yeah. Disney. Disney used to have three water parks and they had Typhoon Lagoon, Blizzard Beach, and this one called River Country. And River Country was the one we would go to the most often. And it had like natural water from Florida. The slides were amazing. Um, And I was really short. And so a lot of the Blizzard Beach slides were just, I was a thrill seeker, but too short to, to seek the thrills. And so I would usually get pretty upset at Blizzard Beach because I wasn't tall enough to do a lot of the stuff, but at River Country I was. And my mom didn't like love to swim, but she would do water slides with us. And so we were doing this tube slide, individual tube slide, and we all went down by ourselves. And I went somewhere in the middle of the pack. I think my brother and my dad went first and my mom was last. And, you know, usually when you get at the bottom of the slide, they make you get all the way out before they let somebody else come down. Well, that wasn't the case here. We all like passed our tubes off to the lifeguard cast member. And then we were all standing there waiting on my mom to come down. And it was a hugely unique experience because my mom who doesn't love water is going down the slide with us. So like I was super excited and me being super, super short, I'm standing in the waiting pool, you know, head is above water, totally fine. And my mom zips out of the slide, like her inner tube flipped over and she was (laughs) submerged head down. Well, then she was like splashing around and thought she couldn't touch and started panicking because her tube flipped and I'm like oh, stand, no. I'm like standing over top of her like what are you doing like I'm just standing here and my cast member the cast member remember grabbed her and said are you all right there ma'am and it's just like one of those things like this woman this grandma with the hall of presidents lady it's like not a dopey mistake but it's a funny story where my mom could have just stood up and now it's my family's favorite story we talk about it all the time because I was like three foot tall standing looking at her um but those are like the funny things that that happen on your trip that you'll just talk about forever like I'm sure they like probably go up in their grandma's face now. Is this like- is this the same experience, Allie, that you talked about on? I think it was our spring break episode. Probably did. Yeah, <laughs> we do, we we personally in our family tell that talk about that story all the time. Probably like oh you have to be there type thing. But um yeah, it was so funny. I honestly feel like at this point. I'm kind of hoping that these unplanned dopey moments happen because you know that dinner at California Grill that she went to is going to be something that's just like, you will never, ever forget. Yeah, exactly. And this one, this one from one of our listeners, Jerry, she submitted and it goes along with one of those where it's not a dopey mistake that you necessarily could have prevented, but it's a funny thing that happened. She said it was March, 2023. I took my kiddo to Disney. She was so excited to try to pull the sword from the stone at Magic Kingdom. She tried with all her might the year before and she was unsuccessful. I was amping her up the entire morning. She got up there and she gave it her all, but to her disappointment, the sword did not budge. I had no plans of attempting that morning and I jumped in and said, watch this. Mommy's so strong. Well, lo and behold, it came loose. And there I stood like a giant (laughs) goober. Well, my kid cried and ran into my mom's stomach. The sword came out for her. She said, looks like a childhood dream came true, just not hers. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was so funny. I have any of you ever pulled the sword from the stone? No, I haven't. I haven't seen anybody. I haven't seen anybody in person do it, but. I've seen him on camera do it. Yeah, we actually did see somebody pull the sword from the stone. I've never seen it. I've never even tried, but I've walked past it. It's. I think it would be amazing for it to happen. Again, back to my 1990s heart, I just envision Michelle Tanner pulling the sword from the stone. Like, <laughs> that's just what Michelle it is. Tanner got to be princess for the day. She got the sword. They had the most amazing trip on Full House. How do we just copy paste that? <laughs> Literally perfect. Um, this person says, this goes back to transportation. This is Amanda. She said, I did this two years in a row. So I guess your first dopey mistake is learn from your previous dopey mistake. So we had our car on our Disney trip and we had breakfast at Ohana, which is at the Polynesian Resort. We put it into our GPS and it took us out of Disney World and into an apartment complex. She said, make sure you're going to the Polynesian. You're actually going to the Poly at Disney or maybe just type in Ohana instead. 
Um, so apparently there's apartments called Polly and you need to be knowing where you're going if you're driving. Oh my gosh. We've all made similar mistakes to this one. Lauren submitted and said, we did a monorail bar crawl and we did not plan a food stop. She said we had to stop her emergency mac and cheese at the Gasparilla Grill to prevent us from hitting the floor before we made it to Trader Sam's. First of all, you got to eat. Second of all, that mac and cheese at Gasparilla is really good, actually. And um, I haven't done this with the monorail bar crawl, but the three of us were just talking. My wife and I did this before riding Guardians of the Galaxy at Epcot for the first time. Um, We did a bit of a drink around the world and then had cocktails at Space 220 and then tried to ride Guardians twice. That was tough. Oh. Don't drink and ride, folks. Don't drink and ride. I did the same thing, of course, at Epcot drinking. Decided that I, um, my my girlfriend and I, it was just like a mom's day out, mom's night out. And uh, we decided that we were going to, you know, really do it up and ride Mission Space for the first time. I don't know if you guys are aware of what that ride is, but if you look into like the hard nose of many people's opinions, that is at the top of their list. Um, And that's because they trap you in this little box, the door closes and you have no way to get out. Now, add alcohol on top of my arty claustrophobic personality. And like, it was bad. It was bad. There was no vomit involved, but um, definitely saw my life flash before my eyes. At least you were on a ride that had a a vomit bag if you needed it. Right. I mean, (laughs) what other ride? could you think of at Disney that has a vomit bag? And why is that still a thing? Not the vomit bag, but that ride. Uh, We talk about this literally all the time. It's (laughs) here's the thing. The only time I'm going to ride that is when we do back when we did our Epcot episode, we talked about listeners planning, like ruining our day at Epcot. And I'm just revving myself up for when we actually do that, that that's going to be on the list. And so as a loyal podcast host, I will do it, um, but it'll probably end my day. I don't think I can do it. Worst case would be starting on Mission Space. Like if you don't know if it's going to make you sick, do not start your day there. Awful. This- I don't know if I can do it. And I don't know if it was alcohol related, why like that's in my mind that I can't do it or like I, it's just that scary. No, it's it's that scary. <laughs> Only the orange. I mean, green is... Green is the other color, right? It's fine. But mm-hmm. no. this person, uh, Rachel, she says, I took my four month old to Magic Kingdom, which is not the dopey mistake, everyone. You can take your babies to Disney. Should I got him a cute monogrammed Mickey outfit off Etsy with his name on it before we went? We got a photo pass for that day. Not sure if that means they got a capture your moment photo session, maybe. And all I wanted was a great picture of him and his outfit in front of the castle. We left our hotel very early. We stayed in our pajamas and I had everything laying out. Parked at the ticket center and I realized that I left everything, including the monogrammed outfit, back at the hotel. She said, luckily I had a Mickey onesie backup outfit. He wore that for the picture instead. Um, See, look, look at you with your backup outfit. So (laughs) good for you for having a backup. Um, But if you are going to pay money for the monogrammed outfit, you know, make sure you bring it with you. How often do do people plan that? Like they plan their park bag, they plan all of the things and they get to the park and they're like, and that's sitting at home on the table. I Ugh. bet that happens a lot. Yeah. I bet it does. Uh, April said, did not realize I had to have a park ticket to do the keys to the kingdom tour at Magic Kingdom. Showed up <laughs> on the last day of our trip to do the tour and couldn't get in unless we pu- purchased a park ticket for the day. Yeah. What do you do in that situation? That's not like it's going to cost you like 20 bucks to add on. That's No, that's another because it's going to be a single day ticket at that point. So if you have three people, 300 bucks easily yeah, in addition to the tour that you paid for. Yeah, people, you cannot not realize that if you do any sort of tour, even a VIP tour, I kind of feel like VIP tour should just include unlimited park access. Like you just go and do whatever you want. Not the case. Yeah. You want to go to multiple parks, you have to have a park hopper. And you do still have to have a reservation for the park you want to start in uh, up until park reservations go away early next year. Uh, Yeah, not included. Same with dining reservations. You can't dine in the park without a ticket. Yep, sure thing. Cannot do it. Don't plan to eat at uh, Cinderella's Royal Table if you don't have a park pass for Magic Kingdom. And really just don't plan to eat there at all. Yeah, don't do it. (laughs) This person said, actually, as it relates to Cinderella's Royal Table, Risha says that they planned to do a rope drop all the way to fireworks day with their 18 month old and their three year old. So that's already a dope mm-hmm. mistake. They weren't going to leave the park. They're starting probably at 6 a.m. 
probably going till 10 p.m. or later, figured the kids would nap in their stroller. Doping the school. Kids did not nap in their stroller. We could not do our 4 p.m. reservation at Cinderella's Royal Table because they were melting down and so cranky. We ended up eating at Cosmic Rays instead <laughs> and didn't That's even go oh, yeah. order. So from a reservation at Cinderella's Royal Table to Cosmic Rays with no mobile order. I don't know why everybody always dogs Cosmic Rays. I mean, it's great. I mean, it's not as great as Cinderella's Royal Table, but you know, the that. food just kind of is subpar at, at Magic Kingdom. My family does end up at Cosmic Rays a lot because everybody can eat there. Everybody will eat chicken tenders. They actually have a pretty decent theme park burger. Like, it's fine. But they have those window seats. I think we talked about these. Actually, I think on our Spring Break episode, Becky, the same one you were just referencing. They have those tables by the castle. and. Like, that's a nice view. You eat quickly. You get some air conditioning. It's not bad. But I think if I had a Cinderella's Royal Table reservation and I ended up there, like, it it wouldn't be enough. (laughs) I think that that view from the window of Cosmic Rays with the view of the castle might be a better view than you're going to get inside of the castle. It's it's a pretty awesome view. It's not going to be fancy food and Cinderella. No, but like you don't eat at Cinderella's Royal Table to have a view of the castle. No, you definitely don't. Hide the castle and see the princesses. Yeah. Have ever, ever, any of you ever lost a kid in Disney? Mm, no. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> I did it once. It was <laughs> what bad. happened? What happened? Macy, our, so she's 17 now. And you know how sometimes like when you're, you're traveling with your kids, you feel like, you know, where everyone is, everybody's accounted for, everybody has a hand they're going to hold or a stroller they're going to get in. We went to Disney with six adults and our three kids. Well, actually, we only had two kids at the time. Six adults and two kids. I have never lost a kid at Disney until you have so many adults that you assume somebody else has the kid. And Macy was lost. She was lost by Splash Mountain. Fortunately, we had pre-planned for her to, like we practiced, if you get lost, you go and find somebody who has a name badge and tell them that you lost your mom. And the Splash Mountain cast members were so good at just like hanging on. They find you very, very quickly. You should never stress losing your kid in Disney because they are so good at handling those kinds of situations. But of all of the times to lose a kid when you have six to um, two parent to child ratio, <laughs> like how does That's that happen? Funny. Yeah, um, Disney is good about it, but yeah. that would scare me. This person said this is a common mistake. And this is one of those where you can either you either embrace this and you're a person that doesn't care or you let this ruin your day she said um last year we went to disney and we took some ponchos that we got from the dollar store but we left them behind at the hotel for our magic kingdom day all day it was lovely out the weather was perfect that night we decided that instead of watching the fireworks and i'm gonna go ahead and assume that Brittany, this is our listener had already seen the fireworks so i'm hoping she didn't just skip them and we chose to ride the astro orbiter and then swing through Buzz Lightyear one last time since there was no line. We came out from Buzz and it was lightly raining. And by the time we made it to the castle, it was a torrential downpour. (laughs) She said we had no ponchos and we were walking with a hundred other people. It rained for about 30 minutes before we finally said, oh, well, and just let ourselves be drenched and got to the buses. By the time we got to our room, the rain had stopped, but our shoes were completely soaked. We had to throw them away in the trash. Don't forget your ponchos and a change of shoes. Have you all been caught in the rain? And what do you do? Are you like a rain jacket, poncho, change of shoes person? Or are you just like, I'm going to be wet? I'm a poncho person if I can remember it. (laughs) Yeah, forgetting ponchos is a regular. And at this point, one day Laker came home from school when we moved to Florida for the first time. Florida rain is like no other rain on earth, I don't think. Like it is a downpour. He came in and he's like, he comes in, he comes and gives me a hug soaking wet. And he's like, mom, that was kind of fun. It's just water. And so that's that's our family like motto when the rain is it's just water. Embrace it. It's fine. (laughs) We try to take ponchos, but we forget them constantly. I would say to this, but don't be a dopey and leave the park because so many people leave the park because it's raining and it's like, don't do that. Like it, Magic Kingdom even has a rainy day parade. Yeah. It's really like, good. and there's so many attractions. You Go watch uh, Carousel of Progress 23 times until the rain subsides, if that's your jam. But there's so many ways to escape the rain. And so many people leave and then inevitably, once it stops, all the rides reopen and the lines are super short. Yeah. 
For all this reason, we're going to make, for any smart moms travel agents listening today, our hidden and Mickey will be poncho. <laughs> Bring your poncho. They fold up super small and just have it. We, when my wife and I were on one of our trips together, we had planned to hop from Epcot to Hollywood Studios and we had a reservation at Oga's. And I have this really cute little monorail bag. You both have seen it. It's like a little crossbody, and it's it's one of my favorite Disney things I own. But it's it's not super functional. It's really small. It basically barely holds my glasses case and my credit card. You know what I mean? Like that's all I'm in my, like I have an inhaler. That's what I shove in there. And that's all I'm bringing on those days. And so this day that we had this Epcot to Hollywood studios day, I wanted to wear my monorail bag. And so the thing I eliminated was the poncho and on our hop, as we were getting to Hollywood studios, it lightly started to rain. And my wife is like, I'll just be wet. I don't care person. She doesn't even bring a poncho on the trip anymore. She doesn't care, but it matters to me. I hate being wet. And I just had to give in. I mean, it was downpour puddles in, in Toy Story land as we're trying to make our way to Oga's. And I remember going on my Instagram and going on my story and just being like, we're so, uh, I left my poncho at home because I wanted to bring this bag. <laughs> and we ultimately just had to embrace it. I was so cold, but luckily I got like a fuzzy tauntaun at Oga's. Um, because yeah, it was, it was torrential downpour and it happens like that. I mean, it's just, it goes from nothing to, um, you know, downpour. Yeah. The cost of, of fashion, right. You have to give up the poncho to have the cute bag. It's fine. It's fine. We're getting, we're getting really to the end of this list list here. Um, and I'm glad we've been able to share a couple of our own dopey mistakes. Uh, another one that I made, this was really recently on a trip of ours. This was so crazy. And I don't know how I did this because, as a travel agent, I book travel from the airport for my, for the families I work with. I make sure they know how they're getting from the airport to the resort. They know their transportation routes to the parks, everything we've been talking about in this episode. The day before we were going to leave on our trip, I realized we had no way to get from MCO, the airport to our resort. I, all the shuttles were full. Like the ones I usually book for my clients had no availability. We couldn't just Uber because at the time I had two small kids in car seats, plus a daughter in a booster. And that's just like an Uber combination you're not going to find. Like now I think we could get away with it because my kids are a little older, but then it just, it wasn't going to happen. And so then I went to my private car service that I book for families a lot and all of the like lower end (laughs) options were gone. And I ended up having to spend like $500 on a one way, like massive massive 20 person party limo. (laughs) (laughs) It was terrible. There's th- there's five of us. Five like, of you in a party limo. <laughs> five of us, three small kids. I mean, God, they loved it. But yeah, whoops. <laughs> yeah. So this last one here, uh, not necessarily a super funny one, but one you want to absolutely make sure you know what you're doing. This is one of our listeners, Elizabeth. So we did no research on Genie Plus, which by the way, this podcast, Smart Moms Playing Disney Podcast, is a great Genie Plus episode. <laughs> Uh, lots of people listen to it, listen to it, and it gives you some of the information's a little um, like from when we recorded it a couple months ago. But most of the bulk of the information is exactly what you need to know to strategize Genie correctly. Um, but she said we did zero research on it before going. So cool. there's your first dopey mistake. She yeah. said on our very last park day, we decided we should go ahead and try it out, except we still knew nothing. And we waited until we were inside the park to purchase it. She said, by the time we got in there, we rope dropped Tower of Terror. We waited on our friends to arrive and around 10 a.m. decided to go ahead and purchase the Genie Plus. There were barely any times left for the rides that we wanted for the day. We grabbed Star Tours. Needless to say, the experience was pretty bad. We got barely any rides with it. By 10 a.m., you've had the first round of selections with Genie Plus starts at 7 a.m., So all those people have already picked. And then you've had all the people that scan in and the two hours after park opening. Yeah. Already start- I mean, you're, you're slim pickings at that point. Star tours, star tours. Yeah, like, like, that's probably all that was left. Yeah, probably because star tours is going to have like a 15 minute wait at some point during the day. <laughs> Most of the day. Yeah. I, actually, I actually like star tours. Do you guys like that road? I do like it. It's okay. Yeah. They're giving it an overhaul. So that's going to be good. Mm-hmm. And then this very last one, I just think this is a really important one for listeners to know our listener, Samantha said, and also a fellow smart moms agent said, I forgot to charge my phone the night before our very last park day. We spent an hour trying to find a charging spot. My husband was looking everywhere. Uh, that's a big mistake. And it's especially dopey because you can get fuel rods, like those rechargers all over the park. Um, your phone is going to die. So you have to bring an external charger or you have to bring a fuel rod 
Um, and you certainly aren't going to waste an hour of your park time trying to charge your phone. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't have the ability to just grab a fuel rod, like just give up on the phone. Like yeah. you're with your family. Just yeah. At that point, you just need to, to, to give up. Don't waste an hour. <laughs> don't waste your time. It's too valuable. Uh, so we've learned a lot about transportation. We've learned a lot about prepping. I mean, there are, are easily ways to, I don't want to say ruin your day. Cause like I said, that's a choice. Nothing should really ruin your day while you're at Disney. But I think the biggest lesson here is know your routes. Yeah. I think most of these dopey mistakes are things that could easily be planned around other than the funny stories. You're not going to like, how are you going to avoid falling Mistake. out? How are you going to, how are you going to avoid mistaking a cast member for a wax figure? <laughs> yeah. Or pulling, the sword, <laughs> or pulling the sword out of stone in front of your kid. That's like all they've wanted for a, for a oh, year. Oh my gosh. How often do you think like those that parents have like dreamed of making this magical vacation. Have you seen some of these TikTok videos of like the Disney excitement taking over the parent when they're like meeting Mickey and they like push their kid to the side? <laughs> oh my gosh. There's some funny videos of that. Well, I, uh, I really enjoyed doing these mega sevens episodes. We're going to be back to our normal smart moms plan Disney podcast, uh, formula next week. All of our normal segments will be back. Uh, we're going to dive into some new territory. In the next couple of weeks, talk about some things we haven't talked about before. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But I think if you haven't had a chance to listen to all seven of these mega episodes, these are the planning episodes that you need. These are the ones that are going to make your trip just the very best it can be. And then, of course, make sure you're working with one of us to to make it all happen. Anything else? Any other dopies? I don't think so. No. Well, I uh, I think that's going to do it for us today on the Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast as we wrap up the Mega 7s episodes. Today, your dopey mistakes gave us a smile and all of our listeners the lesson they may need to have a more enjoyable trip. If you are ready to start planning your trip or ready to start planning another trip and you don't already have a Smart Moms travel agent, please let us help you not make dopey mistakes. Please Head to the link in our bio on all social media right here in the show notes for this episode. You can find this link anywhere. Get connected with one of us. Let us work for you for free. Help make you have the best experience you possibly can. If you're not already subscribed to this podcast wherever you listen, please make sure that that is something you do. Don't make the dopey mistake of not letting these episodes hit your phone the second they drop every Tuesday morning. Make sure you're following us on all social media, wherever you can at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast. And until next time, we'll see you real soon.